The Mufasa trailer proves that Disney is just an old man living off a pension. Except in this case, the pension is nostalgia. The original trailer for the legendary 1994 Lion King film told us quite a bit. We begin with the circle of life which directly serenades us with the theme of the movie. That everyone has a purpose and a place they must uphold so the circle is maintained. We meet Mufasa and Simba, our central protagonists. We know Simba is a prince, born to rule after his father passes. Or in this case, until Mufasa is murdered by his evil brother Scar and Simba is driven away by his minions. Simba nearly dies wandering in the desert until he's saved by two new friends, Timon and Boomba. They help Simba forget about his old life and forge a whole new life of being a lowlife. This angers Simba's dad so much, he comes back from the grave to remind his lazy son that he's the protagonist and to take back his kingdom and reclaim his rightful place within the circle of life. Very intriguing story filled with artistry, humanity, hard-hitting themes, love, loss, betrayal, and the importance of not being a lazy bum. Now Disney, desperate for cash, has once again decided to plunder its emergency nostalgia reserves with the release of the Mufasa trailer. The backstory for Simba's father and a story nobody asked for. Especially in the era where Disney has replaced artists heated by burning creativity with marketers frozen by numbers. Numbers that apparently keep leading them back to the nostalgia box. And so here we are again with Mufasa. And that's why you should check out my Dr. Alpha saga. Both graphic novels are complete, save for a few pages I intend to add to the campaign fund. And both are currently available on Indiegogo. The series follows the infamous Dr. Alpha, a notorious supervillain with a grudge against the world, as he slowly finds his way back to redemption. The core idea behind the series is counter to the modern trend of deconstructing our heroes. From superheroes to Jedi, it's clear the mainstream takes perverse joy in giving our once beloved icons tarnished morals, and revealing the truth that they were never heroic at all. Dr. Alpha does the opposite. Instead of the hero, the series deconstructs the villain. What makes a good man turn evil. Can a supervillain with tarnished morals rediscover his last bastion of nobility and reveal the truth that even a supervillain can one day be redeemed? So, if you're interested in a violent, dramatic, and a bit goofy superhero story, give Dr. Alpha a try. Because you deserve a superhero series that doesn't hate superheroes. For once. Anyway. As a creative company, or even if you're just an independent creator, it's always smart to see what has worked in the past, but more importantly, it's better to learn why they worked. Where a smart creator would explore the story elements that constantly work, how to use them, make them into some sort of hero's journey or something, and use these discoveries for fresh new stories. Big companies are simply content with the first part, seeing what worked before and just running with that. Like they saw that The Lion King was still popular, but instead of digging into what made the first movie such a legendary hit. They just took one piece everyone liked and made that into a movie. Oh look, it's Mufasa. You remember Mufasa, right? So we just get an endless parade of content pillaged from older works, with Disney replacing every ounce of humanity with charts and numbers like some kind of artistic vampire. So where does this leave us with Mufasa then? Unfortunately, Mufasa is a movie made in an era where companies prefer flair over substance, which means we don't know much. Despite being a minute and a half long, we only get three important pieces of information. One, that it's about Mufasa. Two, that Disney is going all in on the chosen one trope. And three, that the writers have checked Mufasa's privilege. And that's it. That's all we get. The rest of the trailer is just Mufasa running around, while the CGI department tries desperately to mesmerize us with flashy effects so we don't notice the utter lack of story. I suppose any hint of actual story might risk offending the fickle modern audience. And the mythical modern audience of the 2020s hate privilege. And more to the point, they automatically hate people with authority. Not so great when your main character is from a royal bloodline and destined to rule as an absolute monarch. They prefer following oppressed people, revolutionaries, and people forcing their once silent voices to be heard. So according to the charts, they can't have Mufasa keep his noble blood. To quote, A lion was born 
without a drop of nobility in his blood. After all, we can't have a male hero in a Disney film who's been born into privilege and isn't ashamed of it. Especially if he's going to be the wise king from the original film. That might give people the impression that men who aren't ashamed of being born into privilege and actually champion a kingly hierarchy can be the good guys. Can't have that in the 2020 era. The infantilized modern audience people might feel unsafe. I know the initial reaction might be to groan at the mention of politics. After all, what's so political about a rags to riches story starring a lion? Well, why else did they take away Mufasa's royal blood? Why else make such a dramatic change to such an iconic Disney character? Remember, taking away Mufasa's royal lineage is the main highlighted element in the trailer. I suppose others might say, how do we know Mufasa wasn't born oppressed and earned his way to the crown? Maybe he really was the first king of his line. The original Lion King began with a kingdom-wide ritual, that the animals from all around would make a great journey to see the new child of the king. It felt like an old tradition, not a new one. And Mufasa felt like a strong, wise king taught in the ways of rulership by his father, just like we see Mufasa teach Simba. Not to mention Scar, Mufasa's brother who seems oddly absent from the trailer, whining about how unfair his life is because he'll never be king. A gripe he has against Mufasa for being born first. To quote, Life's not fair, is it? You see, I, well, I shall never be king. Why, if it isn't my big brother descending from on high to mingle with the commoners? Scar despises his brother for both being the eldest and being king, and regrets his lot in life, since as the younger brother he could never be king. So it seems less Mufasa and Scar fought their way up from nothing and Mufasa was crowned unfairly, and more, Mufasa was naturally next in line as king because he was the oldest. But if that isn't enough, the royal lineage is established pretty definitively in The Lion King A Tale of Two Brothers. Here, here it establishes Mufasa and Scar as legitimate royal princes, and introduces Ahadi, their father, and more importantly, the Lion King before Mufasa. So this so-called prequel seems to have altered Mufasa's backstory for no other reason than to appease a modern audience. So far, it seems the movie will at worst be politically correct cringe, and at best be a smear of lifeless CGI animals running through a series of market-approved scenes and completely devoid of artistry. But what if it wasn't? After all, it's easy to complain. But let's imagine if we were in the Disney's writer's room and the Disney executives hand us a movie called Mufasa, set to explain the rise of the iconic father of Simba, but with one major change. It's a rise from the ground up. Mufasa is no longer of royal blood, and the movie's about the young lion earning the crown. And now we are tasked with coming up with the actual story. All right then, how do we make this a viable, watchable movie? Is it even possible? Well, let's see. From what little we're given from the trailer, I can see this story going one of three ways. The first is the chosen one route. Going by how hard the trailer was pushing the whole destiny the aspect of the film. Destiny. This is likely the one they're going with, but also my least favorite. Technically, the Chosen One can be used in a lot of different stories, but here, I'm talking specifically about the Sword in the Stone scenario. A young hopeful hero grows and learns until he's worthy enough to pull the sword from the stone, or otherwise accomplish a task that would prove his worth as king. This is where you usually get a prophecy, or a legend that foretells a great hero who'd arrive to fulfill that prophecy. Kind of like the Dragon Warrior in Kung Fu Panda, the one where the prophecy foretells a warrior who will one day be worthy to read and understand the Dragon Scroll and become the Dragon Warrior. The Chosen One trope is typically on my short list of tropes you should never ever use, along with multiple dimensions and time travel. Tropes, of course, can be fine if they're well written, but these three in particular are particularly difficult. The Chosen One trope often feels cheap because of how it's typically used, as a guarantee that the hero is going to win. We know Neo will win because he's the one. We know Poe will win in Kung Fu Panda because he's the dragon warrior. To put it simply, a typical main character earns that role due to some skill or merit. The character is the main character for a reason, rather than just because the author said so. This trope commonly makes it feel that no matter how powerful the villain is, or how much the odds are stacked against the hero, the hero wins by fate rather than hard work. 
even if the hero trained pretty hard. The very fact that he's a chosen one diminishes his accomplishments quite a bit. Like a dungeon master who miscalculated the balance of a boss encounter, notices your party getting destroyed, and decided to secretly cut the big bad evil guy's health in half. So in this scenario, Mufasa is the hero of the journey, and Rafiki will act as the Merlin. In other words, the mentor. Together, they run through some challenges until Mufasa solves a problem he's been predicted to solve, and eventually earns the right to be king. The currently kingless land finally gets a leader when the destined lion arrives to earn the crown. The second option is the conquest path. We might have a land ruled by a tyrannical king, which, according to the trailer, might be the smear cat on a hog for some reason. Are these two supposed to be Timon and Pumbaa? Anyway, this one might echo Simba's own quest to take down Scar. This path would be right up Dizzy's alley, since they could mirror a lot of plot points and scenes from the original movie, hiding any laziness under the guise of homage. Maybe the land below the mountains is a land subjugated by tyranny, and that tyranny has finally reached Mufasa's home. The classic, hero gets his village destroyed by an evil empire scenario. Maybe some enemy lionesses venture to the mountains in search of food, since the land below is quickly turning bare. Obviously, the evil king doesn't adhere to the circle of life philosophy. Mufasa, in this case, loses his parents, or maybe his entire pride, pushing him to venture forth and overthrow the evil king. Rafiki takes him in, mentors him, and trains him. Years pass, and he's eventually ready to topple the king. For added spice, we can have him meet Sarabi, his future wife, along the way. Then, of course, we have the evil king capture Sarabi to raise the stakes. Now Mufasa must defeat the evil meerkat king to save both Sarabi and avenge his loss. Mufasa wins and not only takes the crown, but also Sarabi in marriage. And the final idea follows the hero's journey, but in a different way. This third way has Mufasa as a great unifier. In this scenario, there is no king. Maybe there never has been one. In this scenario, Mufasa descends from the mountains in search of something more. More food, a better place to live, or just a strong sense of adventure. This time, the land is divided. It's in chaos. No order at all. Mufasa, under the guidance of Rafiki, sets off to unite the land. This might explain why Mufasa meets so many different animals and there's so much running around in the trailer. Here, Mufasa must bring order to the chaos. He'll meet the leaders of every group of animals, pass trials, and create the circle of life philosophy. All of this culminating in a battle against a stubborn leader. Mufasa is crowned king, order is established, and the once chaotic land is finally united under one king and one ruling law. Just a few ideas of where this bare bones story might go according to narrative theory. It's disappointing that a billion dollar company delivers a trailer that tells us almost absolutely nothing. Ideally, a trailer should give us the main character, who they are, who the antagonist is, and what the conflict is. As in, why the hero is involved and what they need to accomplish. The Mufasa trailer tells us his name is Mufasa, that he's a commoner now, and that he's destined to do something. Oh, and that he runs around a lot. Let me know what you think about the options in the comments below, or maybe even tell me some of your own. Until next time, do better, Disney.